Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Behind me is my 1973 Moto Guzzi. I guess it's an Eldorado, you can call it what you want. But anyway, I've been working on this for quite a few videos now and I'm going to kind of conclude it. This whole series with this video, this is kind of the odds and ends, leftover stuff. Little bits and pieces of stuff here and there that I didn't really include in other videos. So please enjoy. Unfortunately, the bike is equipped with Amol carburetors and I did not have the intake boot for it. And I found this on eBay for like 15 bucks. This is for one with have Del Ordo carburetors and it's got a crack in it too. So it's not ideal. But the one for Amol carburetors is like 75 to a hundred dollars. So I'm going to try to rig this thing up and make it work. I took a Fernco, I think it's an inch and a half uh, pipe repair coupling and cut it in half and that's actually about the perfect size so I think I can kind of get this all to get in there and work together if I can make that work then I'll figure out a way to cement this rubber back together or buy the a new version because the new one for the Del Ordos is like I don't know 30 bucks I do have the original air cleaner box it goes on like that and that's where the carburetor boot goes the rubber boot and I found an air filter for it this is a unifilter mg1 that's like 30 40 dollars too but I found this on eBay like open box deal I guess it laid around for a while I got it for like 15 dollars too so I'm gonna see if I can get all that put together so I at least have some sort of air filtration I noticed when I had the front end apart that the steering damper was bad so I ordered one and it finally showed up it was back ordered so we'll do a little comparison on that when I get this thing off here so there's the old one there's the new one and so that should make some difference I don't know what difference that makes. We'll find out. Another topic I'm not sure we've covered is I replaced these petcocks with some aftermarket ones. It would have been more correct for a 70s bike probably, but the original ones were leaking like crazy and I didn't feel like messing with them. You can apparently get rebuild kits for them, etc. So that has actually stopped the leaking process. There's this like nut that's double threaded that adapts the petcock to the tank threads. So, I'm torn between colors. I think this bike was originally black. I think it may have possibly even been a police bike because there's no way a toolbox will fit there. That's where the siren would have been. So I was going to go back black, but I think I was going to go back and have this chrome coves and the Moto Guzzi script, but I think temporarily, until I can put some miles on it, etc. I'm going to clean this tank up and just spray can it black. See how I like it. I have the other Moto Guzzi script that I can just stick on for now. So I think that's going to be our plan. So I'm going to get this tank off here. This script was kind of hell to get off the other side. Emblem, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what the hell they used to glue it on with. I guess dust. There we go, something yellow and nasty and sticky. So I might find a little better way to support this tank and we'll start sanding on it and then apply some filler wherever we have chips and things like that. So I think I'm just gonna support it this way.
there that shouldn't go anywhere i painted motorcycle tank guy for a guy before and i had wet sanded it and i was handling it and of course my hands were covered with wet sanding dust and it was like glass and i dropped it and put a dent in it so yeah that um took me about four hours to fix that little boo-boo all right let's get to sanding since this is designed to be an interim paint job i'm gonna hit it with some 120 to get started when I do the permanent paint job someday, I'll probably chemical strip it because I don't know how, what kind of shape the chrome is under it and I don't want to really scratch the hell out of it. But for right now, I'll just try to make this sort of flat. Sand it on it with, I think, 180 and, or 120 and 320 because that's what I had. I'm going to hit it with some and I also blew it off, hit it with some wax and grease remover. Next. Next, I'll mask this up and then hunt for some automotive sandable primer. I think I have some. So I had to go purchase a can of primer filler if I were doing this for real, I, would, I have some automotive grade stuff where I would get some and do it correctly. But for what we're doing here, this should be fine. So I mask off what needed to be masked off and we'll give this a few coats. called for two light coats and then one medium wet so we'll give that 10 minutes that's, that's two medium coats now we're gonna really hose it on let that dry at least overnight you can see some pits and stuff that may or may not sand out if not we'll fill them so let that dry and we'll uh, sand on here in a day or two. So there's the tank all painted up. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's a rattle can paint job. I'll let it cure for a couple days, weeks, months maybe, and then wet sand it and see if it clears some of that dirt out of there, but it's not too bad. Good enough to let me know if I like the color. I do have these side covers. They're chrome. This one is in decent shape. This one is not. The chrome's all bubbled up. I don't know if that's going to clean up anymore, but I think it'll look pretty bad. Plus, it's come off right there. So I'm debating whether or not I just want to go ahead and paint these black like all the other ones I've seen. I believe I'll probably go ahead and do that. This bike was missing the toolboxes for the side. I was able to find a pair on Facebook Marketplace. They're chrome also, which the chrome looks not good. And the one that's better has like an electrical knockout hole in it, so I don't know what the heck they were doing there. The latches are gone, and the one with the big knockout looks like it's had some stuff brazed shut and still has some holes in it. This one is all crusty and rusty inside, but it's in better shape. So I think I'm going to go ahead and paint all this stuff. And I'm only really going to be able to use one toolbox because the where the ignition switch is located. So I think I'll go ahead and I got some latches that I think I can retrofit in here. I'll go ahead and try that and then paint these. This toolbox is clearly missing the latch or whatever held it shut. Almost looks like it was something threaded, but I've heard that these 5H cam, 5 8 inch cam lock deals, like for a drawer, will fit. And it's keyed, but it's not going to go through that hole. So we need to open that hole up, I'm assuming to 5 8 of an inch.
Okay, so that should be a half inch hole. Then it occurred to me, I need a 5 8 hole. And pretty sure I don't have a 5 8 bit. So let me look for that. I do have a unit bit. And there should be a 5 8 on there somewhere. And there it is. So I'll just ease up on this until we get 5 8 So got a ways to go. I'm gonna have to try to drill towards the bottom so I don't chop through the top. A little easier said than done. I have to try to concentrate on getting more out of the bottom. Let me use this in the way it was not intended. So there, I think something like that will probably work. I'll just have to attach the appropriate option for a latch. There's quite a few of them. Right now, I'll go ahead and sand this. Let me clean some of this rust out of it. Sand it and paint this. I took my crappy chrome parts to work and sandblasted most of the chrome off. Most of it came right off but some of it didn't, some of the harder spots and our sandblaster, the abrasive needs changed. So that was starting to piss me off, so I gave up on that. The toolbox did, it cleaned up pretty well and I went ahead and primed it before the monsoon came. Done some research, some of this chrome flakes off, but once it stops, you can't really get back under it. So I've read that you can use acid and remove it so I've purchased some muriatic acid and I've read that you can submerge that in 30 to 40% and near as I can tell this is about 31% so we're going to try with the initial dose of just straight with no water and see what happens. So this is so childproof I can't even open it. <laughs> nice. Great. So since that lid won't open, we'll just do the next best thing. Make our own. So we'll just set that down in there a little bit. See what happens. <coughs> Using a well ventilated area. did add a little bit of water just to submerge everything and then obviously parts of it that aren't I'll have to just move them around get them submerged after a bit but I don't know if that'll show up but it's foaming pretty good and it was it was off gassing pretty well so I moved it further away so I don't know if we can see that and this stuff is still in here percolating after a few days taking some of the chrome off. It's also turned the metal black. So we'll let that cook a little while longer and see how it turns out. 
So I painted this toolbox and it's, it's decent enough for now. If I decide I like to black, I'll wet sand it later. It's only been cured for like a day. So let's go ahead and get the latch put in. This one does have a gasket. There are multiple little plates that can be used, how far it turns. I guess a quarter turn. There's also one for a half turn, but we'll get this put in and get the nut on the back first, and then we'll decide. I ground the corners off this, so maybe this will go on here and turn now. So even a little more grinding. Let's see what that does. It's kind of wedged in there. I think that'll work before I go too far. Let's figure out what we need to do as far as the latch arm. So a little fast forward on the toolbox. I could never make the latch work right. So I made this piece of metal, kind of looks like a hockey stick. I don't know if you can see it being black, painted it, but it works. How the hell am I going to get my hand behind there? But anyway, it's all nuts and bolts. So there's the toolbox installed. Don't have any tools to go in it, but you see why I had to do the latch because I couldn't just couldn't make it work right no matter how I bent the tab. So I made that little piece. There we go. So next, got a little update on the side covers. If you have any small children watching, you might want to have them look away. So as you remember, I installed, dropped them in some muriatic acid to remove the chrome. And unfortunately, it didn't get the memo. It removed the metal instead of the chrome had it in there for a day or two and looked at it and it was starting to flake the chrome off and it looked fine and everything seemed okay and it's like one day after about three days all of a sudden it was gone they were just disintegrated so that's rather unfortunate fortunately somebody had a set on ebay they must have just listed because they weren't available a couple months ago so I have purchased them and they are on the way and they're black too so let's hope they'll uh, hope they'll match so this lighting I don't think it shows up very well but I've wet sanded and buffed the fuel tank and it looks it looks way better maybe the sun will come back out and we can get it in the sun but now I need to put the emblems on it I think as I stated before this is a temporary paint job see if I like the black so let me get the emblems I don't really know what these are off of if they belong to this bike or not but I think that's too low I think I'm just gonna center it on the tank I think they're a little bit twisted from when I peeled them off but I'm just gonna eyeball them on the tank Obviously, I think up there looks too high. I think it needs to be centered. So we'll put it about right like that. And I've applied regular double stick adhesive tape, which you can never start when you want to. So now that's finally started. I think that looks about right. Let's hope it sticks. Good enough for right now. I could probably apply some tape, blue tape or something to make my level line, but I think eyeballing it should be good enough for now come on let's 
box should contain some replacement side covers. Unfortunately, they are not available on Amazon. Hmm. Little, a little bit crusty. Pins a little jacked up. The other one I think is belongs right there, and it's gone. That was a little better, other than looks like it's a little dented. And I guess this, the other one had some evidence of something going on in there, so maybe they all did. But yeah, they're not horrible. Anyway, don't put your side covers in acid, and then you won't end up having to buy used ones. I'm sure everybody remembers the floorboards on this. Well, now that it's no longer red, I figured the red felt floorboards may need to go. So, I found a scrap of some black rib material at work. I went ahead and cut them out and glued them on there. At some point I'll buy the correct ones. I did both sides. For the time being, this is pretty much all I'm going to do to it. I think it's about as together as it's going to get until I get some actual riding miles more than just around the neighborhood or slightly out of the neighborhood. My son did notice that this muffler decided to eject some of its internal parts. The other one still has it. So I need to decide what I'm going to do with that or just leave it and let it go. Still need to attach the mufflers. They're just held on by the header pipes and the crossover pipe I made. Figuring out, I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with the rear crash bars. If I'm going to put them on or if I'm going to put foot pegs or what's going to happen there. But for right now, we'll just ride it and see what else breaks. So I think that's it for this series for now. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you already haven't. And I think right after this I'll throw some video footage in of riding it with a new camera. Maybe it's a little better footage than I've posted before. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon.